I am a recovering perfectionist. And I don't mean that in like a cute, humble brag kind of way. It's actually been pretty debilitating for me for much of my life. It seems like highly sensitive people can have it particularly bad, but I'm committed to not letting perfectionism rule my life. And in this video, I hope I can help it to not rule yours either. As I've mentioned in other videos, us HSPs have these five traits that make us a little unique. And in the case of perfectionism, it's like these qualities and in particular our depth of processing and our ability to sense the subtleties get turned up so high that they inhibit our ability to achieve our goals and participate in life in a fulfilling way. We can get tunnel vision causing us to lose perspective and become obsessive over details that might not matter in the long run. Or we might go to the other extreme, procrastinating and avoiding opportunities that can move our life forward. If you're a multi-potentialite or someone with many creative pursuits and interests, you might switch gears constantly between projects to prevent yourself from really touching down or sharing your work with others. But in the moment when we're in the grasp of perfectionism, it's impossible for us to see this all clearly because we're caught up in a mirage, chasing after an illusion and soothing ourselves with a false sense of control. And all of this can be exacerbated by the fact that as HSPs, we're often trying to navigate or compensate for being overstimulated, <laughs> our tendency for emotional volatility, a high level of empathy, which can go hand in hand with people pleasing, and most of all, shame. So what's an HSP to do? First of all, let's take a closer look at this thing called perfectionism. Danny Gregory, who's another YouTuber, sums this up perfectly in my opinion. He says, So the thing about perfectionism is that it's not ultimately about doing it well. It's really about never doing it well enough. This very simple definition reminds us that perfectionism is always rooted in trying to avoid some kind of negative outcome. Brene Brown, who is an expert on the subject of shame, writes in The Gifts of Imperfection, Perfection is not the same thing as striving for excellence. Perfectionism is not about healthy achievement and growth. It's a shield. And Anne Wilson Schaaf, who's the author of When Society Becomes an Addict, probably says it the most boldly when she says, perfectionism is self-abuse of the highest order. She also says that the addictive system, which I talk about recently, assumes that it is possible to be perfect, which of course it is not. We can look at perfectionism in this way as a form of addiction. So psychologists outline two different types of perfectionism. Adaptive perfectionism, which is people who set high goals and standards, but embrace failure and learn by continuing to stay engaged in life. And then there's maladaptive perfectionism, which are people who set unrealistically high standards for themselves that are impossible to achieve. Maladaptive perfectionists become obsessed with reaching an impossible standard or might avoid taking action entirely because of it. If you're watching this video, you probably struggle with the latter, and this is the type of perfectionism that we are talking about in this video. As a young kid, I was called Mikey, and I was a super sensitive, creative little boy. I loved to sing and dance and dress up and put on plays and write music and poetry and draw. You get the picture. I also felt everything. When I got to a certain age, I was informed by other kids that all of these qualities that came so natural to me were bad. They made fun of my high-pitched voice, my femininity. Some kids in our neighborhood passed around a survey to determine if I was actually a girl. And I even lost my best friend in middle school because his mom was afraid that I might turn him gay or something. Throughout all of this, I could feel the world starting to slide away from me and I became engulfed in shame. I was bad. I didn't belong. Something was deeply wrong with me, and I didn't know how to fix it. I've talked before about how being a highly sensitive person born into an insensitive world is in and of itself traumatic. This is what I mean. And this is how Perfect Michael was born. Perfect Michael is a character in my inner world that was constructed to make sure I would never have to feel that kind of shame ever again. He bullies me first so that I'm not caught off guard when someone else does it to me. Perfect Michael is hypervigilant, obsessive, and will hijack my creative energy, my depth of processing, 
and my appreciation for the subtle in order to control every possible outcome. And he robs me from being able to be my authentic self and to participate fully in life. Rather than protecting me from shame, he actually reinforces it. I share this with you because I think it is a common story for a lot of us highly sensitive people. And I'm grateful to be at a point in my life when I am no longer willing to let perfect Michael control the show, especially when the shame he is trying to protect was not even mine in the first place. This is where the healing process around perfectionism begins. It begins in realizing that the shame you carry is a lie. The story that you don't belong, that you're deeply flawed, these are all lies. And they were most likely passed on to you by someone else who believed these lies about themselves. But you are safe now. And you can choose to stop believing it. You can live into another story. To use my inner orchestra model, link up there to learn more, healing happens when you stand on the conductor podium as your highest self and you ask your perfect Michael or your version of him or her to sit down and you tend to and care for the wounded part of yourself, your inner child that you continue to carry to this day. You step into life. You bring yourself to the world. You share, you make mistakes, you learn, you grow, and you create healthy boundaries to stand up for and protect your gifts and your innocence and your sensitivity. If we think about life as a flowing river, we feel the most alive when we are in that river and participating with life, with all of its twists and turns. In our healthy state, we experience ups and downs, successes and failures without it meaning anything about our inherent self-worth. Perfectionism, on the other hand, pulls us out of the river and onto the shore, onto the banks. We withdraw from the world and we start to reinforce a belief that we don't belong. We cling to right and wrong thinking. We can become stagnant and miss out on opportunities for growth, achievement, and connection. And we miss out on the joy of sharing our gifts with the world. Now, the best tools that I've found to combat, combat, combat. Now, the best tools that I've found to combat perfectionism are ones that bring me back into the river, knowing full well that it's probably going to be uncomfortable, maybe a little bit cold. The keys for me are consistency and higher purpose. For example, you're watching this because I have created a production schedule that keeps me accountable. I know that each day, each week, I'm not going to reach perfection, but through each iteration, I will be improving and much more than if I just stayed on the banks of the river. This actually brings me a lot of relief. I also realized that what I'm sharing is much bigger than just me and Knowing that I can help other highly sensitive people gives me a big reason to show up. It allows me to not take things so personally. This all keeps my perfect Michael in check, both from procrastinating or avoiding and from over obsessing on the details. Trust me, I still obsess, but at least I have to rein it in a little bit. There's probably a lot more that I could cover in this video, but you know what? I'm gonna let it go. Thank you, perfect Michael. I hope this video helps you feel seen and shed some light on a pathway toward healing and allowing your authentic self to shine. Let me know in the comments below if you struggle with perfectionism as an HSP and what strategies do you use to manage it? If you liked this video and you found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this in the future. Now get out there and be your perfectly imperfect self. Thanks for watching friend and namaste.